Welcome everybody to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson. You like the music? Spooky, right? Is it Halloween season? Is it Halloween candle mania time? I think it is. It's never too soon to, 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 to put in the preparation work for the Halloween season. And that's precisely what we're gonna be talking to, talking about today. I, th what I'm about to do is one of my favorite things all year long that I have the privilege to do. And that is talk about Witch City Wicks. Just about my favorite can of company of all time. And if you're not familiar with Witch City Wicks, they're based out of Salem, Massachusetts. They're the very definition of small batch candle companies. It's essentially a one-woman show. Liz Frazier, a uh, native of Salem, Massachusetts, is creating some of the most haunting, some of the most elegantly gothic, some of the most thought-provoking candles that's out there. And if you don't want to take my word for it, there's plenty of other folks out there who'd be willing to share with you their, the same opinion. And what I'm going to do today, we're going live. I just want to put that out there. We're, we're fully live. I can see you folks in the chat room. Uh, but I wanted to go live so that I could do an unboxing of all of the brand new 2019 fragrances, candles, products for the Halloween collection from Witch City Wicks. Liz Frazier, uh, Witch City Wicks, they were kind enough to send me uh, a box filled with goodies. Um, perhaps there's some surprises we don't know yet. I, I literally have the box here. It's It's been taped shut for two days, and I've been uh, just waiting to have a chance to do this video. So how about we jump into it? First things first, I want to pull you guys up. And although uh, I we are going live, I want to make sure that if anyone's new to the channel, that, uh, you know, we're moving at a somewhat fast pace. Um, so if uh, you don't mind, talk amongst yourselves uh, while I am talking about these candles here. And um, and how about I, I can, if I can pull you guys up, this would be great. There you guys are. All right, let's do this. I see a lot of familiar faces in the house. Who's excited for Witch City Wicks? Who has purchased their order for Witch City Wicks? This year, uh, they had a pre-sale at the beginning of the month, or I should say a pre-order, pre-sale, whatever you want to call it. This way, um, unlike previous years, where candles have sold out, the whole candle collection has sold out, I think last year, I think it was in 14 minutes. Now, it's very important for me to say that Witch City Wicks, they will restock continually throughout the, the autumn Halloween season. But take it from me, these are candles that you're gonna wanna get as soon as possible. You don't wanna be burning these a week before Halloween. You wanna be enjoying these through the month of September and October. Uh, so they officially go on sale uh, at the end of the month, I'll go over all of the details, give you, uh, share with you some of my uh, my tips on how to make sure you can get your hands on these candles. But let's do some unboxing here. How does that sound? I think that sounds pretty good to me. All right. So look at that. We have already some decorative, decorative uh, Halloween shipping tape. I love the little details like that. This is what these unboxings are all about. Uh, let's get a knife. Well, actually, let's get a little bit of coffee because I'm going to need some. Uh, because we're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about inside this box. And your eyes do not deceive you. That is a Witch City Wix mug right there. That's right. It's important for me also to say this is not a sponsored video. Um, this I'm not certainly not being paid anything to say anything specific about these products or these candles. Um, candle companies send me th products their way. 
I open them up, I talk about them, I share my opinions, my sensory evaluation. That's the deal. There's no, there's mo no money being swapped. Although, I could certainly use the money. Just kidding. Let's open up the money, or <laughs> let's open up the box. Let's see if we can get a good angle here. All right, and I wanna be careful in my excitement I do not want to slice anything that is in the box. Now, um, although most of these candles aren't going to be, the, the fragrances aren't going to be brand new. They, 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 they reappear every year. Um, there's new designs to the labels, and there is um, a revamped candle from the past. Let me put this on the ground. All right. Look at this. So a little trick-or-treat bag, a little wax paper bag here. Let's see what's inside. We got some peanuts, and not of the Charles Schultz kind. Ooh, looks like we have some swag here. Is that a kaleidoscope? It's a, can you guys see? That's a, that's a fun little toy. All right, all right, I dig it. I dig tokens like that. Oh yeah, ooh. I have plenty of these in the sticker form, but check this out. I need something metal. That's not magnetic enough. This is a, a magnet. Flexible magnet can put that on my vehicle. Very cool. Very cool. Oh wow. This is this is really like Halloween night. Tricks, tricks, and treats. Excuse me, it's a hot day in New York. Look at this. A little bath play buddy. That's a vampire ducky. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Spider ring here. So, you know, with your, your order, you get some little uh, toys for yourself or the kids. A little skateboard. Let's get in front of the camera so you can actually see it. This is insane. <laughs> I love this. Ooh, and this is going to be something we're going to be talking about. This is uh, a fragrance that has yet to be released. So make sure you stick around to figure out what that's all about. I have all the details. More little toys. And... Which City Wicks Candle Coven, little another little sticker here. Candle Coven, a uh, little shout out to Which City Wicks, is their Facebook group. Make sure you go over and join their Facebook group to get all of the uh, up-to-date info and details. Liz's business card. I love how her design uh, every year just gets, you know, more and more solid. I love it. The pinstripes, how you can see the pinstripes this year, they're not perfectly symmetrical. You know, they look like they're, you know, they've been uh, painted with a, you know, with like a paintbrush. Just like, like that, right? Postcard, Witch City, Wick, Salem, Massachusetts, with a little note. Thank you from Witch City, Wicks. Shane, thanks for everything. Uh, talk to you soon. Enjoy Liz and the Witch City Wix crew. Uh, I had the pleasure to meet some of the Witch City Wix crew in their uh, brand new studio, their workspace, uh, just about two weeks ago. And uh, just saw a little bit of behind the scenes and the work environment that they have. And it was such a pleasure, not only just to see everybody and to say hello, but to see, like I said, a little bit of the behind the scenes. All right. Oh, man. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
take a look at the new designs. We're going to get up close and personal. Uh, what I'll do is show you uh, show you the new designs. I'm, I'm going to be producing brand new videos on all of these fragrances this year. I'm actually not going to be doing it in the studio. I'm going to be going out and about and talking getting other people's opinions, going to farmer's markets, going to pumpkin patches, going to uh, uh, a hard cider facility. I'm going to be going to as many different places as possible, as possible to not just share my opinions, because I've shared my opinions in plenty of videos before. Um, but I want to see, and for you to see more importantly, the raw reactions from complete strangers, people who work in the industry relate to the aromatics of these candles. Uh, look at the new box label design. I, 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 I can't say enough how much I enjoy uh, this new look. Again, the pinstripes are not perfectly symmetrical or uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, you know, you can see it has a little bit of that Tim Burton-esque uh, jagged lines. Uh, looks like it's been like hand painted on the box. Brand new labels on the boxes themselves. And the boxes are such an important part of these products. So my one of my favorite candles, it's so hard for me to choose which would be uh, a favorite of mine but this is just about uh the most delicious pumpkin candle concept i have ever burned i've ever smelled it's super consistent every year and we do have a brand new label here and in fact instead of me trying to just do that let me do this how about that um, that'll make it a whole lot easier. Um, we have uh, the two uh, goofy, fun, playful, a pumpkin, uh, jack-o'-lantern faces in the middle of a forest. Those uh, black vampire bats silhouetted behind that beautifully majestic full moon. And... Um, yeah, this candle has definitely been tweaked, or the label has been tweaked, the artwork. Uh, just enough so where I feel like, you know, you, f you know, you feel like if you're purchasing these candles every year, you're getting this collectability factor, right? You know, this isn't just Pumpkinhead by Witch City Wicks. This is Pumpkinhead 2019 by Witch City Wicks. So if you are a collector like me, um, I, I purchase the candles uh, every year. Um, I burn uh, them every year, but I also save a candle unburned to put on my shelf. So this way I can go back and look at the labels. I can smell how, the, how they age through time. I actually have quite a few vintage Witch City Wicks candles. And just to sum it up real quick, um, whoa, boy, whoa, where'd you guys go? Where'd you guys go? No, 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 no. Come back. Come back. This is insane. desktop that's why i am sorry about that Woo! new system here um let me give you a quick little breakdown uh, i want to i'm going to show you right after this my my video that i produced last year on these candles and i really shared uh, uh my deep thoughts on all of these fragrances so and and, and to prevent from me repeating myself i'm just going to link up the uh, the video from last year in this live video so if you want to see my in-depth evaluations of all of these candles check out that video but let's 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 see what 2019 ooh that's really filled to the top too Whew. oh man 
it's so hard to pick a favorite. This is... I can't emphasize this, I, I emphasize this enough. Pumpkin spice, right? The pumpkin spice um, movement of the, the 21st century, right? Um, when maybe it was even before the 21st century this this whole obsession with every product in the world that has pumpkin spice in it it's crazy it become it gets to a point where people are like i'm an, i've had enough of this pumpkin spice stuff even though most of the stuff is delicious and the pumpkin spice coffee beverages always delicious however uh what's important that i always mention about this candle although that this is an ex explosively delicious pumpkin spice experience. It is not one of those experiences when you walk into uh, like an arts and crafts store and you're just smelling the conglomeration of all of the autumn potpourris and the spice decorations, the spiced wreaths, the artificial smells when you're walking through those arts and crafts stores. You know, that's a pleasant smell for some people, but for a lot of people that is, you know, deadly to their sinuses, it provokes headaches. That's what this, that, that's, couldn't be further from what this is. This is a beautifully balanced, very authentic pumpkin spice candle but it's going to be balanced. It's going to have extreme creaminess and sweetness. I've called this anything from uh, like a pumpkin spiced frosted cheesecake covered muffin to, uh, um, um, I meant to say cream cheese, uh, and then a pump or a pumpkin pie cheesecake. It's that creamy. It, I swear, you, you know, you can, putting your nose to this candle you could almost smell like or it almost feels like you have your nose in heavy cream or whipped cream it is insane it's got those beautiful nuances of nuttiness to again provoke the idea of the sweet treats uh, but even the beverages, I just said coffee, uh, like uh, pumpkin spice lattes, you know, think of that cream, that frothed milk, that steamed milk, and that smell when you walk into a coffee shop in uh, the autumn season. Not only do you have the smell of all of the pumpkin spice beverages just wafting in the air, but you're smelling all of the pumpkin spiced pastries that are uh, lingering on everybody's table in, in the, the display cabinet, being baked in the kitchen and the back, room, uh, the back room. This is truly, for me, the ultimate pumpkin candle. I can't say it is my favorite. It's so hard for me to choose. But this is one that, I won't lie, I probably burn this one out of the Halloween collection the most. Um, every year pumpkin head and if you're a fan of the horror film uh stan winston's pumpkin head uh that's a little extra bonus all right let me show you a quick little clip of uh, a candle that i evaluated last year it won't be the whole evaluation uh but this way it'll kind of give you a sense just in case you haven't seen the video of a little bit of how I do my breakdowns. Uh, and I'm gonna show you a clip from this candle right here, Sleepy Hollow. This is easily, um, probably, it has to be the most popular, the most sought after, the hot ticket on the bill every year, the one that sells out the quickest. Uh, Which City Wicks is, uh, Which City Wicks, a sleepy hollow fragrance and this is the ultimate New England or upstate New York sleepy hollow slash the headless horseman experience let me show you a clip from uh, my video last year uh, so this way you can see for yourself a little bit of me in action doing my in-depth evaluations. All right. What an expression on my face there. I also smell that sweet, lingering smoke 
inside of that fireplace. Not smoky, but that aroma of smoke was once here. You follow me? Also, the cold iron that that firewood once sat on. We can even say the, the autumn air, the ominous breeze coming in, trickling down through the chimney. At some capacity, all of those elements are at play in this candle. You know, we have that ashy material, that, that old fireplace, not smoky, but that lingering sweet smoke with that hollowed out gourd, the roasted pumpkin. Uh, we're starting to build that, that jack-o'-lantern, right? That jack-o'-lantern ablaze. Also, with the baking spices, it's adding the deliciousness factor. Take it from me, a person who spent a lot of time in Sleepy Hollow, this is evoking those memories of a late night stroll through those old carriage trails in Sleepy Hollow, kind of like Ichabod Crane's final moonlit stroll through the cemetery. As you're walking along in the dark, you can smell the distant neighboring homes. All of the kitchen windows are open and they're all pumping out the smells of cakes and sweet treats, all of those autumn delicacies. But with every step that you take, you're kicking up little bits and pieces of the forest floor. We have the leaves, the brush, the fallen apples from the orchards. All of that is creating this environment in the candle, you see? But there's something else. There's a dismal reminder that there's something looming over your shoulder. Something is in the shadows. The silhouettes are distorted. Something's out there. And there's that distinct smell of a pumpkin on fire, a jack-o'-lantern ablaze. That pumpkin popping and sizzling as the fire makes its way through that fragrant flesh. The Hessian trooper, the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow, the dark specter guardian of the cemetery, the tormented spirit of a soldier two and a half centuries deceased, the ghost of a man in search of his lost head. Is it a myth, legend, or superstition? Well, I'll let you be uh, the judge of that one, but either way, I'd be hard-pressed to uh, give you another example of a candle that provides this much atmosphere, uh, setting, tone, Sleepy Hollow by Witch City Wicks. Let's move on to candle number two. All right. So how was that? That was a fun video to make, uh, no question about that. Um, and uh, everything, that was only a, a fraction of my discussion on the Sleepy Hollow Candle. Um, so let's take a look at the label here, uh, Sleepy Hollow. Uh, beautiful uh, uh, change of label. We saw this label last year, but... Um, it's so far different than the labels we've seen in the past. Uh, I love uh, the kind of black and white steel, uh, uh, steel blue, uh, slate gray colors. This reminds me of, uh, you know, a uh, uh, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, uh, um, you know, Vincent Price, Hammer horror film. Uh, it has that very uh, British horror film gothic look to it. Love that design. And uh, let's just take a quick sniff. I mean, you heard me just talk about it in depth. But what's amazing about this candle is that not only is it atmospheric, is it, you know, it brings you outside into the landscape of Sleepy Hollow. And like I said in the video, I spent a lot of time in Sleepy Hollow. And I actually uh, lived there for a short while. Oh my God. It's just, it's amazing how even what? Three, four years later, uh, after smelling this candle for the first time, it brings me back to 
the first time I smelled it. The first time I smelled this candle was on camera inside of the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in uh, Sleepy Hollow, New York. And I, I, to be honest, I bought the candle simply because it was called Sleepy Hollow. I wasn't expecting much, but I was completely enthralled by this candle. I mean, in many ways, it was no, like nothing I had smelled before inside of a candle. So authentic um, uh, outdoor aromas, uh, but it bridges the inside as well uh, because we can imagine pumpkins and we can imagine the apples outside out in the landscape farmers markets or apple orchards or pumpkin patches within upstate new york but also there's this the sweet dec decadence to this that reminds us of what's baking in the kitchens you know of uh, all of those residential houses in sleepy hollow and uh, just simply one of the most complex, uh, thought-provoking uh, candles, you know, just will bring you right, I can almost guarantee this, it will bring you into the spirit of Halloween with just a simple sniff. So Sleepy Hollow, again, this is the hot ticket on the bill. I'm sorry for the poor lighting here. Uh, but this one has a tenden tendency to sell out. So if you do not, uh, we're not a part of the pre-sale this year, again, uh, stick around and I'm going to share with you uh, the, your best bet to get your hands on these candles before they sell out. Like I said, you do not want to be getting these. Uh, even in October, you want to you wanna be enjoying these. Uh, th you know, through those uh, later weeks, at least the later weeks in September, if not now. Some people are already celebrating Halloween. So, Pumpkin Head Sleepy Hollow. And this one is the new fragrance. We'll skip that for now. We'll get back to it. This one was brand new for last year. This one is called Trick or a Treat. A lot of candles this year we're talking about having this name, but Witch City Wicks actually had a, a trick-or-treat candle really early in the in their uh, in their uh, how do I say it in, in in the first days of the company they had a trick-or-treat candle that uh, was retired last year it was brought back it was a different fragrance. And to me, it was certainly thought-provoking and interesting. But I wonder, because this is only really the second year it's been around. And if you guys are interested in the fragrance notes, I, I should have said this in the beginning. We'll talk about the fragrance notes uh, as soon as we take a look at all of these candles. Um, last year, I described this as... An early 20th century, you know, like taking a time machine back into the early 20th century and going to uh, like a penny arcade, a penny uh, candy shop, I should say, where, you know, you have all of the old timey retro candies long before the days where you had things like Skittles and Starburst, things that are tart and sour, loaded with citric alloc. Uh, citric acid and malic acid candle uh candies that were sweet and more old fashioned and that's what this reminded me of like a big burlap sack on halloween night with retro candies it smelled a little bit like bazooka joe hubba bubba bubble gum um and a little bit of spices and i even said wax lips Yeah, yeah, you know what? I f I'm going on a limb here. I think just based on my initial sniff here, I think she dialed this in. I think she dialed this in from last year. There's definitely a few more elements going on, and I feel like a few things uh, perhaps a little bit more in check because I am getting more of a fruit forwardness. And I know one of the, the fragrance notes in here is persimmon. 
and uh, persimmon is a, is, a, is, a, is a difficult fruit to talk about because it really doesn't have a strong aromatic. It certainly has a strong taste. Or not a strong taste, but a taste. But yeah, I still... I, I, I get it. I just feel like this is... What I loved about the candle last year, only there's a little bit more of a fruity forward going on. I'm still getting the spice. I'm still getting that bubble gum in the greatest way possible. I'm telling you, um, you know, think of the the hubba bubba uh, uh, tape in the dispenser, or uh, the hubba bubba in the wax paper. Is it hubba bubba? Double bubble that comes in the wax paper packages. You know, a nice little uh, subtle nuance of some spices. So subtle that you almost can't even tell what kind of spices. It's just like a, a little sprinkle of ground cinnamon. Or maybe not even ground cinnamon. Almost like a candy-fied cinnamon. Like uh, uh, red hot tamales. That is just a fun candle. I really, I can't tell. If you are like into retro Halloween decorations, you know what I mean. Um, one, uh, the administrator for the Candle Enthusiast Facebook group, uh, Rachel, I, I don't know if you're watching or if you're watching later, but she sent a bunch of photos of uh, Michael's, Michael's the craft store, of all of their new Halloween products. She kind of sent me a few things yesterday or posted on the, the Facebook group. And it seems like this year their theme is all of the retro, you know, the old cats and the old posters, the witch, uh, images of the witch, you know, silhouetted over the moon. I love retro Halloween. I love it. The old plastic masks with the elastic bands, the, 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 the little paper decals that you hang on the wall. Um, uh, even, you know, things like uh, the vintage blow molds that you put in your front yard, the ghosts and the ghouls and the goblins. Um, and to me, this is just so supportive of that. It complements this idea of a retro Halloween. I mean, if this candle were called um, a Trick or Treat a Retro Style, if this was a, a, a Trick or Treat... Um, I'm trying to think of a clever name. I can't come up with the one in the moment. But if this was a candle that, uh, if you really uh, have fond memories, nostalgia of retro Halloween, or you just like that aesthetic, this is a candle that really will enhance that uh, that aesthetic, that experience. You know, decorate your house with that retro Halloween and burn this one up. And I'm telling you, you'll take that time machine back um to uh those uh vintage days of halloween just good old-fashioned halloween trick-or-treat big burlap sack of halloween goodies inside of a candle i'm glad to see this one back i wasn't sure if she was going to bring it back but she did and i'm happy that she did let's take a quick look at the label here uh different label uh we have you know, a little bit more of, I'm trying to think of the, the, the big differences, but we do have a punch of colors, some, you know, saturated areas of the label. Uh, really great artwork. I mean, what's great about Witch City Wix labels is that, you know, without even putting Witch City Wix on the label, you know what company uh, this, this, uh, this candle is coming from. It's just so definitively, so synonymous uh, with Witch City Wicks style. So I, uh, like I said, one more time, happy to see this one returning this year. But let's keep moving. And poison apple. Oh man, this is so delicious. So I've said this a hundred times. Uh, this is a great Halloween candle, but this candle will work any time 
through late September or late uh, uh, late August, September, October, November. You can even bring this into Christmas time. Uh, I'm always saying that I grew up in apple country, uh, and uh, the reason is that uh, you know something like this is really, really going to hit close to home. This is. Uh, such a wonderful exhibition of uh, that hot, spiced, mulled apple cider served on the streets, the cold, frigid streets in October in New England um, or in here in apple country um, in the Hudson Valley. And it's just the authenticity is out of this world and we do have a new label let's take a look at the label before we even give this a sniff poison apple look at that big punch of colors um, different formatting this year huge font with the poison apple I love it I love the the, uh, the those combination of colors um, that blue and the vibrant vibrant purple color it kind of reminds me of those nighttime scenes in Charlie Brown's uh, it's the gray pumpkin Charlie Brown um, you know how those backdrops in that uh, television special um, were done with watercolor and pastel and they had these really vibrant backdrops the colors I love it and uh, that's kind of what this reminds me of. Maybe Linus uh, goes to uh, an apple orchard on a certain night of the year and uh, waits for the great apple man. I don't know, making up stuff now. But let's give this a sniff. Again, the ultimate spiced uh, hot apple cider. such an authentic apple and it's what's what's more than that is it's not just oh it smells like an apple you're getting apple and and several different forms it's not just apple cider you're getting fresh apple juice you're getting a freshly sliced off uh, freshly sliced apple cut in half right off the tree you're smelling apple skins you're smelling oxidized apples think of apple pie filling or apple sauce right when it turns golden and delicious um, and speaking of golden delicious you have um, you know a really really sweet apple here you know so if you're not like a big Granny Smith I love all kinds of apples and I love Granny Smith and I love sweeter apples but if you're not into the tartar, uh, you know, higher uh, acidity um, Granny Smith apple, this is, you know, that golden delicious. This is that Macintosh, um, uh, very fragrant, sweet kind of apple. And just the right amount of spices. And what's amazing is it's so authentically like like steeped mulled spice. And I'm going to go on a limb here. I wonder if there is a little bit, just a touch, a touch this year of like a floral, a touch of a floral component to enhance the reality of, you know, if you smell like a Macintosh apple, I always say that it has almost like a, a floral aroma to its skin. Nothing pungent, just a slightly floral nuance. And it's funny because this is like, you know, this is, has like a touch of, like if you had like a potpourri with a cinnamon stick, apple slices, and maybe just like a few petals of uh, some very mild, sweet, dehydrated florals in there. 
And all that does, it doesn't make it smell like flowers. It just makes the apple smell more authentic. But let me tell you, this thing will warm you to the bones. I'm telling you, just like a hot cu uh, cup of apple cider, um, this is just so decadently delicious. And man, is this one showing really, really nice this year. I'm gonna have to like cross-reference these with past years, um, but I'm really, really liking the poison apple. All right, let's move on to ah uh, a fan favorite, uh, but this one is. It's for a very specific crowd. Um, and whether you don't consider yourself a daring uh, candle burner, especially when it comes to Halloween, um, I just I just really wish I could buy a thousand of these and just willy-nilly send them out to people who think they might dislike a candle like this just to see if they could come around to it. This is a very authentic, outdoorsy experience. Earthy, uh, we have a lot of herbal notes, woody notes, mossy notes. All Hallow's Eve, it truly is like that All Hallow's Eve evening out in the dark, trying to make your way home after trick or treating. Let's show the label this year. Bam. And, uh, yeah, um, this, this candle, uh, I recommend for everybody, but I recommend it for those of you who consider yourself to be hardcore, uh, Halloween fans, uh, or at least candle fans, uh, because this really uh, brings, you know, uh, can the art of candle burning and the experience to a whole new level. Let's try to break this down real quick. Woo! Oh, yeah. That's it. That's it, baby. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm very vocal when I smell candles. I'll be in a candle shop. It's quiet. Right? I'll take a candle off the shelf. Everyone's quiet, but there's people everywhere. And I'll smell a candle. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. And I don't even realize that I'm doing it. Yeah, man. You know, it's just, um, please, if you're interested in this candle, check out my video from last year. Um, it's an excursion through landscapes of forest fields uh, uh, uh the, like i said dark evening in october there's a sense of being cold and chilly inside of this candle there's a sense of really having your nose close to the ground the forest floor you can smell the mossiness the earthiness the mulchiness you can smell the soil and uh, a lot of the components that are in here are contributing to that authenticity um, I'm, I'm almost feeling like maybe, maybe, maybe I could be wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm picking up on some myrrh, um, myrrh as in frankincense, myrrh. Um, you know, we, we know the, the resins, um, you know, around the holiday season is very popular. Uh, but myrrh is a very thick, rich, almost dusty and leathery, um, uh, sometimes it has like a, a really rich syrupy molasses aroma to it. And I feel like perhaps that it might be an addition this year or it's just shining through a little bit more. Uh, but a very, very balanced patchouli that don't be afraid of patchouli. Um, uh, it's very balanced, which creates, again, that authenticity of the vegetation and... Um, I'm not sure if there is vetiver in here, but the reason why I say something like vetiver is that 
if you've ever smelled it before, it smells like haystacks, hay bales, you know, dehydrated, you know, hay, or even like corn stalks, you know, the corn mazes that we see, um, you know, in Halloween attractions uh, uh, during, uh, you know, the autumn season. Uh, but just smoothing out all of these robust outdoor notes is this juicy apple. It's this like massively juicy apple. And that can be literal because, you know, growing up in apple country, I always talk about on Halloween night, my brothers and I would uh, take shortcuts through the neighborhood so we could get all the good candy. And my brothers were older than I was. I was a tiny little guy. And um, we would jump the fences of what we called appled orchard cemeteries and what these were was these were very old apple orchards that were completely neglected they were just uh you know were once harvested but once the residential neighborhoods were built there's these little pockets of apple orchards that just left there there's no access roads there's houses completely uh, neighborhoods completely surrounding them so you just had these gnarly trees overgrown grass and we would jump the fences to cut through these apple orchard cemeteries to get from one neighborhood to the other but the smell of the apples. There were apples still growing on these trees, and by that time, most of those apples would be on the ground. And in those icy, frigid nights of late October, Halloween night, um, you know, it's just, there would be the smell of these apples mashed and slightly fermenting on uh, the orchard floor. And there was just this beautiful, but kind of spooky, uh, dark, you know, apple orchards at night, not a very welcoming place, but this smell of apple just wafting in the air. And that's what this reminds me of. Uh, so very literal to me, but uh, what that apple does is it cuts all of those really rich, herbal, woody, um, earthy notes of this candle. And it just gives you a big punch of juicy fruit. Oh yeah, oh, big time juicy apple. And um, that just gives it a monstrous contrast. So again, if you are hardcore about Halloween and pushing the envelope, if, if, if candles to you are not just about home fragrance, but they're about storytelling, they're about experience, they're about painting a portrait. They're about setting a tone, a setting, helping you escape, jump into a portal, going to a very specific place in your mind. If candle burning is an art form to you, not just about making your house smell beautiful, there's nothing wrong with that. This is a candle uh, uh, that will really, really knock your socks off. There's at least a very good chance of that. And if you're looking to up your game or really change the way you think about candles, this is my personal suggestion of a candle that you're going to want to get your hands on to experience. Um, All Hallows Eve by Witch City Wix. That's a, that's a candle right there. All right, we have one more candle here. And this uh, was a candle that was retired last year. It did not return last year after being around for several years. Actually, more than several years. Uh, it was called a Witch's Broom. And um, I actually don't have one, an older one, in my collection. I would love to kind of cross-reference it. But uh, I've smelled it plenty of times, and uh, it was uh, a beautiful kind of uh, conglomeration of different herbs and spices. Um, it really smelled like the whole idea of witch's broom 
It was kind of like uh, the witch's pantry. You know, all of her ingredients and goodies, her mason jars on the shelves, all of the things that she uses to put into that magical the witching cauldron, uh, all of her uh, ingredients, that's what this candle uh, smelled like. However, when I met with Liz uh, from Witch City Wicks a couple weeks ago, she told me she gave uh, the whole candle a facelift. I didn't get a chance to smell it on that day, um, but uh, we have a brand new label, and I don't think I, well, I can do this. Let me do this, so this way, um, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, we'll show you what the, the label kind of looks like up close. And because uh, it's a whole new label, and there's a very interesting story uh, behind the label here. So uh, we have, if we can zoom in a little bit, we, whoo, we have uh, the you know, the silhouette of the witch uh, with her lantern and on her broom, uh, crescent moon, black bats, that beautiful orange magenta sky. But look at that building, that cathedral-like building on the bottom of the label. Now, if anyone has spent any time in Salem, Massachusetts, you'll you'll immediately recognize this structure. This is the Salem Witch uh, Museum, and um, th it's a wax museum. It's an attraction. There's a presentation uh, several times a day. It's a gorgeous building. It's kind of like the centerpiece of Salem. Um, you know, you, it's just, it. it's absolutely gorgeous. And I had the pleasure to stay at the Hawthorne Hotel one night on the top floor and I had this bird's eye view of this of that that building and it was all lit up at night and it was absolutely gorgeous let's see if I can actually find this is Liz Liz's um, Instagram profile well that's the website bum, bum. Uh, that's the website where are we there we go. There it is. Um, uh, just uh, so you know, Witch City Wicks uh, on Instagram. Definitely, definitely um, going to want to uh, make sure you follow, get all up-to-date information. But there it is, the Salem Witch Museum. So um, this candle is actually tying in with a little bit of the actual town of Salem. And remarkably, this photo uh, is lit. That sky almost looks just like the label. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. But let's see, let's see what this candle smells like this year. Uh, witch's broom. All right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that color. I mean, I just hope that the camera is at least doing a little bit of justice um, to show you the vibrancy of the color of these labels. Um, and I just have to, I'm sorry about the focus, I have to say this, I always say it, but Liz comes from a digital design background, one of the many uh, uh, amazing talents that she has. She creates all of these labels, and she is a perfectionist. And, uh, I mean, not only is it easy to tell that she puts an incredible amount of time into designing these labels, uh, but it shows. It definitely shows. Oh, yeah. That is a little bit different. Not just a little bit. Oh. It's, you know, it's, it's sweet, spicy. 
Okay, let me get let me just get this. It takes me a little bit. This is why I edit my videos. There's a lotion. Okay, okay. Well, let's talk about the obvious. There's the a candy esque spice, like a like a spicier cinnamon. Again, in check. You know, this is like smelling an atomic fireball from like three feet away. It's not right up under your nose, but it's got a little bit of that confectionery cinnamon spice. I want to say some allspice here. And there perhaps, perhaps might be something uh, like a touch of anise. It, you know, I'm digging really deep when I say that. Um, but there is this very vague, like a star anise or licorice root. Oh, and it's sweeter. It's sweeter than I remember. But what's really coming through, I think, differently is that there's like this lotion-rich muskiness. Muskiness of... And it's reminding me of this witch. It's almost like, um, you know, um, uh, let's think about let's say a witch's uh, handbag, right? A, a bag or a purse that she carries. Inside of that purse is, uh, you know, uh, lotions or, or old flowers, decrepit, uh, um, dehydrated flowers. Um, there is this sense of we're getting a little bit of the fragrance of this of this witch like the perfume the fragrance that she wears herself and it's not like a funky you know uh, musky powdery um, you know grandma's bathroom kind of smell either this is actually actually a really nice kind of lotion I wonder if there's something, I'm saying lotion, but there, there's, there's something in here that's reminding me of a lotion, like the ingredient and in something that we find in lotions. And there's just a little bit of brightness. I don't know if that's a citrus. Um, it's not orange zest. It's certainly not lemon or lime, but there is a something, uh, uh, a touch of a brighter, fruitier thing here. Um, you know, t to me, this is like uh, this is like the old witch's broom candle, only with now with the tie-in of Salem. You know, we're getting a little bit more of a portrait of Salem itself, you know. When you walk around Salem and you check out all the gift shops and the boutiques, there's so many wonderful aromatic things uh, in these boutiques that are just distinct for Salem. You know, there's just the certain wonderful smells that you find in a town like Salem. This is really nice. Maybe it is a little bit of orange. You know, there's one way to find out. Um, we'll, we can look at the fragrance notes. But uh, I definitely think this was, uh, based on my first impression here, a great, uh, great time to reintroduce this candle back into the lineup. A welcomed addition to 2019. Fantastic. Now let's read some of the fragrance notes and then we'll talk about how you're going to get your hands on these candles uh, when the time comes, if you haven't already done so. Um, so let me pull up the Witch City Wix website for us. And let me do this. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let's switch the camera here. 
Bam, and get rid of that. Here we are, witchcitywix.com. As we can see right here, Halloween is coming August 28th, 2019. Please, please write that down in your calendar. Uh, it's going to be very important. Uh, we, they've, like I said, Witch City Wix has already had their pre-sale, but this is when the candles uh, um, are actually going to be in stock. They're, she's already shipping them, but this is when the candles are going to be available to the public next, if you didn't have a chance to be a part of the pre-sale. Um, so let's see, uh, get more info, um, because that's important. There's always um, a time. Okay, so the time is to be determined. So Wednesday, August 28, 2019, they will be live on the website. But this is why you got to follow Liz on, or Witch City Wix on Instagram and check out the website because this time is not only to be determined, but it's also, you know, uh, subject to change. And um, some information here on all of the candles, just in case we don't know, 100% natural soy wax, all cotton wicks and phthalate free fragrance oils. Every candle is poured, labeled and packaged by hand. Nothing we do is automated and I can, uh, testify to that. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, a, a, this is important. A restock happens every week, but we limit the quantities we release. If something looks like it's sold out, chances are it will be restocked the following week. Why do we do this? Read the next bullet. We are very small. We are a very small team packing your orders. It takes a great amount of care and effort to pack each box carefully to minimize breakage. The higher amount of orders means it takes that much more time to pack everything carefully. So yes, um, what's important to know about Witch City Wix is that this is not a big company. I mean, it's just. Uh, there's no other way for me to describe it. This is literally a Liz, the owner, and uh, s s some of her uh, family and friends helping her out in the studio. Um, and um, these candles do sell out. So you need to be ready by your computer when these become live. Because, like I said, last year, the first first run of these candles, everything sold out in 14 minutes. And um, if we do this, the Halloween candles aren't on the website right now. But if you go into the search bar and type in Halloween, uh, you can... Uh, access the Halloween candle so you can take a look at them read the fragrance notes so again if you go into like the collections you won't see the Halloween collection but if you go up to the search bar and type in Halloween it will bring up all the Halloween candles so let us read uh, the fragrance notes let's start with pumpkin head um, uh, obviously it is sold out right now but uh, um, so here's the description. Glorious, let's zoom in a little bit. Glorious pumpkin, lots of spices that include cinnamon, clove, ginger, and a final touch of creamy vanilla whipped cream to give it a kiss of sweetness. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And uh, if you are not interested uh, or you want to, you know, maybe this is your first go with Witch City Wix uh, and you want to do uh, wax melts, this is great, you know, because look, you're getting that full label that's on the jar, um, you know, at a, a more affordable price for you to experiment with. So you really are getting the whole experience um, as far as the visuals. So, um, but also she produces shelf life. You get two ounces in each travel tin and $6 and 50 cents, um, you know, as compared to, I don't know, how much are the Halloween candles this year? See, I don't see them listed. I think um, uh, they're about 19 or maybe $20. Um, 
Let's read uh, Poison Apple. Let's read these description notes. So Poison Apple, I talked about that being that mulled apple cider. Ghoulishly delightful ripe apples mingles with spice, including cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, orange, and cedar wood. Cedar wood. Um, that is something I mentioned last year. Uh, I think I did, or maybe I didn't mention it last year, but that is definitely something I see. And that cedar wood kind of does two things. It makes you think of a little bit of a campfire action or being out in the forest. But that cedar wood could also sort of remind you of like a, uh, like let's say if you added a little bit of apple bourbon or apple brandy, I should say, into uh, your apple cider. You get a little bit of that oak barrel or the woodenness um, into the candle that might uh, provoke, uh, make that, that, if you you know look at poison apple as a, a beverage candle, might make it a little bit more authentic to you. Uh, Sleepy Hollow evokes the specter of the headless horseman riding through the night with the scent of burning fireplaces pumpkin, apples, and rich autumn spices in the air. I love it. I love it. Please, if there's one that you're going to buy and you're really going to work hard to get it, make sure it's that Sleepy Hollow. That That is my suggestion to you. Okay, so the new Witch's Broom candle for this year. Let's see what they said. Uh, a candle to bring forth the magic of a witch's broom. Freshly ground cinnamon bark complemented with herbal cannabis flower. Holy smokes. Herbal cannabis flower, jasmine, rose, and bergamot. There's that citrus and muskiness I was talking about. Bergamot. Tamed with musk. There it is again. Black tea and patchouli. Oh, Lord. Um... I definitely get that all, um, but that is, I think, a pretty big uh, uh, facelift, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I definitely, now that it's mentioned, I see that black tea, uh, the patchouli, um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's got to be so much in check where it doesn't uh, stick out like a sore thumb, but the her herbal cannabis flower. That is really interesting. And jasmine and rose. Again, jasmine, rose, bergamot, and the musk all fall into the musky category. So that was that kind of the aroma of the witch. And I even said crushed, uh, crushed flowers inside of that nurse's or uh, nurse, uh, the witch's handbag or the purse. And. Uh, Okay, so I'm glad that is there, but I didn't I didn't call the the patchouli or the black tea, but I definitely can see that. Let's see the trick or treat. Again, the trick or treat for me was this uh, old-fashioned early 20th century uh, burlap sack of tricks or treats. The description reads like this, a hauntingly nostalgic fragrance of walking door to door in your best Halloween costume with your haul of sugary treats. A sweet infusion pumpkin, persimmon, apple, blueberries, elderberries, currants, orange, cinnamon, sugar cane, and vanilla. I love it. I love it. I think a little bit of that blueberry, or not blueberry, that... Um, that bubblegum aroma comes from the persimmon itself, but definitely something I noticed this year was that it was much more fruit forward, and I'm definitely seeing um, um, uh, that in the description here. Blueberries, elderberries, very nice, and currants, and even some orange in there as well. Uh, and some vanilla to soften it all up. So yeah, a uh, big, uh, you know, what a wonderful nostalgic uh, retro, uh, old time, uh, old timey uh, Halloween experience in the form of a candle. And what else do we have? All Hallows Eve. Oh, and then we got to talk about something else after this. So All Hallows Eve, a frighteningly addicting combination of smoky cloves, earthy patchouli, and fresh 
from the tree apple. Um, that's an understatement for sure. So check this out. Uh, now that we talked about all the fragrances, you can get the entire Halloween collection in the travel tins, uh, two ounces each. Um, you're getting all six uh, fragrances uh, for $37. Um, you know, uh, not a small price tag, but this is the, you know, if you really don't want to lay out a uh, hundred plus dollars to buy all of the candles, uh, this is a great way to, um, you know, really experiment with these candles, find out which ones you're in love with. And so uh, you can repurchase uh, the full size candles of what you really love uh, and uh, know what you want for following years. Although I think that's a great deal, um, I really think um, the, the, the deal here um, is going to be this right here. Um, the complete set of six Halloween jar candles. All, the entire collection, everything in one collection, $110. That might seem like uh, a big price, but remember, you're talking about an affordable luxury candle. These are luxury candles that are uh, handmade, luxury candles in my opinion, handmade, made of the finest quality, made by hand with care and attention, $110 for the entire set, uh, you know, uh, Look, I'll go to uh, a candle shop and, and easily drop well more than $110. And um, I don't mean to, but I do it all the time. But for $110 for this, uh, this entire set, uh, I really think it will up your game um, and really change, um, open the windows and opportunities for what you'll be looking for to burn during the Halloween season. And there's not one in this collection that I would say, eh, it's not worth it. So um, I definitely, definitely would recommend going that route, especially if you've never tried all of the fragrances. Uh, plus if, you know, these candles sell out in a matter of seconds, that's only one thing you need to drop into your uh, shopping cart. Uh, instead of having to go through candle to candle, dropping your shopping cart, uh, worrying about whether or not they're going to sell out in seconds, you just have to drop one item into your shopping cart. And okay, so the price of the jars this year are $19. That, uh, you know, I always get a little bit like frustrated when people say like, oh, $19 for that small of a candle. Guys, this is quality. This is quality stuff. And th they're so, these candles are scarce. They're scarce. This isn't a mass produced, off the assembly line kind of candle. These are handmade, personally uh, made for you and shipped to you. Um, there's something very special and even romantic about something that's of such small quantity and in such high demand. And not only that, but coming from such a very special place uh, in the world, that being Salem, Massachusetts. Um, but that is just the way I see it. What do you guys think? Well, that is going to sum it up for uh, this unboxing of Witch City Wicks 2019 uh, Halloween collection. Uh, I will be once again be producing uh, videos on all of these candles um, uh, in the coming days and weeks. This is not the last time you'll be hearing about these candles. I really want to make some fun content because these are my favorite candles to talk about this time of year so please uh if you're not subscribed make sure uh, you hit that button subscribe keep your eyes peeled and um this way you won't miss any of uh, the the forthcoming videos 
And uh, a big shout out to Liz Frazier from Witch City Wicks, again, for providing these candles, for always being such a sweetheart, being always so kind, and just truly being a genuine friend. Uh, she's truly the real, uh, the real deal, the real article. She's uh, such uh, an amazing person and artist, and it's a, a pleasure, absolute pleasure for me to, in any way, uh, help spread the word of Witch City Wix. That's it for me, folks, today. But we will be doing an after show. If you're hanging out and you're like, Shane, uh, you're live, but you're not chatting in the chat area. I'm going to be going to my second channel. So if you're not subscribed to that channel, make sure you swing over. It's called Aromatically Speaking. Aromatically Speaking. Uh, if someone wants to link that up, please feel free to do that. But that is my all live channel. It's a little bit more laid back and it's a little bit more casual and I have uh, some fun things to unbox and lots of coffee to drink and I will be answering any questions that you guys uh, might have for me. But uh, for this Witch City Wix video, thank you so much and I will be talking to you folks real soon. Happy hauntings. And uh, let me know in the comments below uh, which candles uh, spoke to you the most, the ones I showed you today. And uh, if you want to see um, my last year's video, uh, the valuation of all of these candles, uh, again, I'm going to link that up down below. I'll see you guys soon. Be good. And Morgan Cruzbat with the super chat. Thank you so much. Stephanie Hall, 199 with the super chat. Happy Halloween, Stephanie. Let me make sure uh, I got everybody there. Thank you so much for the generos generosity and sharing a little bit of that uh, with me. I really appreciate that. I'll see you guys on uh, Aromatically Speaking for Smell It Sunday. Give me about 10 minutes and we'll have our after show. Have a good one. Bye-bye.